Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. So it's now time for us to do our one minute book recs again. So this is where we talk about all the books that we've read over the past week with one minute synopsis of each book. Um, it's still tripping me up. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are still doing our Road to 1K giveaway. And Mandy has our next giveaway book, which will be given away at 750. Yes, this is Nine Minutes by Beth Flynn. It is signed by her. We talk about this book a lot because it's that good. You are going to want this book. So make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram for an extra entry. Yep. Okay, so tell me about your reading week, Mandy. All right. I read 10 books. You beat me. Yes. I mean... I did have to work like 12 hour days for, for three of them, but yeah, you beat I me. I also work full time, Jessica. Yeah, but I could <laughs> listen at work. I can't either. I can't listen or read at work. I'm normally used to it. I had to give up my weekend. <laughs> Anyhow, no, I read six. <laughs> I read six this week. So I had a slower week. It's all good. Okay. So. Five of mine were a series that you have to read one, like you can't read out of order. So I will have six to talk about. So we're completely even on the talking. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, but one of yours is our buddy read for this week though too, right? Yeah. Didn't you read the buddy read? Yeah. So we'll just stay on for that one when we do that one, I guess. Isn't So we each have five books to talk about. Basically. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. We can do that one at the end. Are you good with that? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. You're going first. Ready? Oh, sure. Okay. Get that timer ready. <laughs> okay. So the first book that I read this week is called Cute But Psycho. It's by Beatrix Hollow. This is about our heroine. This is crazy. This book is crazy. I still give it five stars. I love this book. So this is a reverse harem. But it is about our heroine, Brie. She has been psyching her psychologist because she thinks that he is like the bee's knees and she is all over the psychologist. Her psychologist turns out to be a vampire, psychopath, um, a serial killer. And she stumbles upon him as he's doing one of his serial killing sprees. And so because of circumstances and things that happen and things that he believes that she is, this is paranormal, by the way, guys, um, he actually has her admitted to Verhollen or Verfallen Asylum or whatever they call it. When she gets to the asylum, she starts meeting some of the crazy people. All of these people are paranormal creatures of some Shape, way shape or form she meets two other guys one of them is a wolf shifter and one of them is a basilisk and he cannot be touched because he just he he'll kill you immediately if you touch his skin his skin so i loved it i gave it five stars it was crazy it was like psycho psychopathic <laughs> but totally halloween vibes but the thing with this is um our little basilisk he has a sense of humor and the sense of humor like totally makes the book. You know what I mean? Like it, it's very dark, but you don't realize how dark because you're laughing at certain things. So I listened to the audio. The audio was amazing. Each guy has a different um, male narrator narrating their voice. Oh, that's cool. So there's four narrators. Yeah. So I loved it. It was great. Okay. Your first okay. book. Oh, no. Okay. So my first book is called The Stopover by T.L. Swan. This is the first book in her Miles High Club series. This is about Jim slash Jameson and Emily. So Emily meets Jim when she's flying and there is a layover or a stopover and they end up decided she like got upgraded to first class because of like this fiasco so she's sitting next to him so they have this fling during their layover and then they go their separate ways now we fast forward a year later and emily has just landed her dream job and it turns out jim is actually jameson miles who runs miles media corporation with his brothers and so now he's her boss so you would think because I love Teal Swan. I love Dr. Stanton. I love Mr. Masters. I thought that I would love this book. I got bored with it. They just went back and forth and back and forth about like what they wanted and if they wanted to be together, but they didn't want relationships and back and forth. 
And it just got really boring very quickly. So it started off strong and then it got super boring. I rated it a three. Uh, it might have been more of a petty three because I really just ended up kind of not liking the book and just wanting it to be over. <laughs> Which confused me because I love Teal Swan. So I haven't read I don't know. that one. I think it just was the second me. one. I read the next one in that series. I don't have any desire to read that one. Did you like the next one? Because I'm like, I don't know that I want to read this series now. I love the second one. The second one? Okay. I guess I'll go try that because I do because really like The second like one is about a woman who is widowed with a bunch of kids. She's got like five boys. Okay. I'm yeah. like, no, I need to go read it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So my one. next book, so my next book was in, in Eternally Hers by January Rain. So this is a prequel to, it's a longer novella, but it's a prequel novella to her um, Shallow Cove series. Now this series sounds amazing. I'm not going to give you a ton of information about this book because it's a setup for the whole series. Am I going to tell you that this does not end on an HEA? Um, it ends setting up the whole series though. It's worth it. You should read this before you jump into it, but this is also paranormal. This is a, um, vampire, um, romance situation set up. It is really good. Um, lots of blood and weird stuff. So definitely check triggers in this one, but it just kind of sets up. I, I do love the premise. It's just that it didn't end on an HEA. I still gave it four stars because it was amazing for what it was. Um, check out the, I guess apparently each book in the series has like a different paranormal creature. So definitely check it out if that's something you're looking for, for the fall, but like it didn't have to be <laughs> <laughs> it did not. You can't call it a romance without an HEA. That's the romance rule. So yeah, that is true. But it was still four it was stars. so shocking to me. I started choking. I saw that. I heard that. Wow. <laughs> Okay. What else you got? Okay. So my next book is called Traded by Lisa Suzanne. And this is the series that I read. It's the Vegas Aces quarterback series. So this is about Jack and Kate. I rated this series overall a 4.5. Some of the books were five star for me and a couple were four. So I gave the whole series 4.5. This is a football series obviously called the quarterback. Duh. Sorry. Okay. So they meet on Halloween when her best friend gives her a shove and she literally falls in front of Jack, who is the quarterback in case you didn't figure that out. He is concerned about her. So he picks her up and carries her off. She's dressed as a cat. They go off to a private room and have like, they just do it. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to say that. So then after they're done, she's feeling like this huge connection to him. There's a knock on the door. Somehow somebody manages to take a picture. And when he goes to answer the door, he's like, talks to somebody and he's like, um, I guess I have to go. My pregnant girlfriend is here. <laughs> and she's Whoa. like, what? So she is really upset by what happens. She leaves and never wants to see him again, basically. But the picture that somebody took of her in the cat costume becomes this meme. But nobody can tell that it's her. So she's like, oh, thank goodness. Well, then we fast forward a, a, some time later. And she is trying really hard to find a job. Do, and she's trying to get herself, her interior design business going. And she ends up getting hired by the owner of the Vegas Aces to babysit one of the players. And it is Jack. Dun, dun, dun. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed this series. It was good. 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 Okay. Right. And how many stars did you give that one? I rated it four and a half because some of the books, the first three, I rated all fives. Something happens in the fourth book that I just was like, eh, I feel like we could have gotten to that. I feel like it could have been written differently, but you know what? Sometimes shitty stuff happens in real life. Yeah. So I gave that one a four. And so I just ended up writing it like a four and a half across the board. Okay. I really enjoyed it though. Okay. Okay. So my next read is a five-star book or five-star read. This is a brand new release from Lilith Vincent. This is Fear Me, Love Me by Lilith Vincent. 
Oh my gosh. She based this book, like she has a love for the movie, The Lab Labyrinth. And she based the character of Tyrant Mercer, who is our, our I do not want to call him a hero because we know he's not a hero, but he is based off the character of Jareth. So if you love The Labyrinth, you are going to love this book because he even has a labyrinth in his um on his estate that he puts our heroine through. Uh, but I wanted to tell you guys really quick, like this is really, really good. I love this book, uh, but I just had to read really quick the note the author Lilith put in here to us readers. It says, dear readers, I'm utterly thrilled to bring you yet another walking bouquet of red flags in a sexy suit with a big damn dick. So <laughs> that is Tyrant. So basically Tyrant has kidnapped, um, at one point in time, we start in the past or in the in the present, where at some point in the past, we find out he had kidnapped our heroine Vivian's little baby brother because dad owed money, and he's let them go. Vivian went in and, um, you know, got the baby brother out. We don't know how at this point, but we know that she got the baby brother back from him. And um, our tyrant has um, developed this like obsession with her, and he wants her. He wants her to have his babies. He wants to marry her. He wants to get her pregnant so she can't go anywhere. Um, so that is how this book starts. And then we go back to the past where we see how that happened. And then we jump back into the future for it to be resolved. So, so, so good. I gave it five stars, extremely dark. It's got trigger warnings as long as my arms. So definitely check those, but oh my gosh. So, so good. So good. Yay. Lilith, you did such a good job. We'll be here next month. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. I had to buy the book cause I didn't pre-order it cause I didn't realize there's a new one out. And her pre-orders are closed. So I had to buy it so I can get her to sign it when I get down there. So, yeah. Oh, you're going to be one of those bringing your own books. I'm taking one. One. I'm going to have to take one too because Gianna Darling did not have her pre-orders up in August when I did all of mine. And then I'm like, hmm, I still haven't seen anything about her pre-orders. So I went and searched and it closed the day before I searched for it. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. So I'm like, I guess I'll just order a book and take it with me. I ordered from Gianna Darling. I you did? did? Mm -hmm. Lucky you. I know, I was late to the game. I <laughs> well, I wasn't late to the game. She was late to the game, and then I missed that. All right. My next book. You're not it's, bitter or anything. No. It's called Hollow's Grove by Lee Jaku. This is part of the Holly Knight series, and this is about Eve and Dorian. I usually enjoy these, but this one was a three and a half for me. It just wasn't, I don't know. Anyway, it was a murder mystery themed event and uh, Eve is helping her best friend set it up. And then Eve's best friend's brother, Dorian, is also there helping set this up. And Dorian has kind of teased and tormented Eve through most of her life. So now she's like got weird like fears of the dark and different things because of him. I didn't quite make all those connections. And they end up, of course hooking up because like what else would happen? Um, this is a novella. He is like all of her books center around some sort of like a, a kink. So he's like a pleasure dom, but it's sort of odd how we find out that information. Sorry. We find it when the sister tells her best friend. So I, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, three and a half stars. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Sure. All right. So the next book I read is called Cute But Psycho. This is by Lonnie Lynn Vale. So this is supposed to be an MC romance. There really wasn't much MC in this though. So I really, I, I don't know. Can you call it an MC romance if you just told that he belongs to an MC club? I, I don't know. Anyhow, it was still good. I still give it four stars. So this is about ATN and, um, and our heroine that I just spaced on her name. Matilda. Matilda's her name. Matilda. So ATN is just getting out of prison. He's from Louisiana, but he decides to go down to Florida. He's going to get his business back from his brother-in-law. His brother-in-law has been kind of running it into the ground and he is a contractor. Like he has a, 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 where he builds homes and builds businesses and those kinds of things. And he gets down there and he's starting to get his build, business built back up and he gets his first client. And that is Matilda and her friend. Matilda is a um, veterinarian and she wants to build her own vet clinic, but Matilda is neurodivergent and she has these little things that like, she just wants to touch his t-shirt and like stand there and touch it and hold the texture for like five seconds or longer, um, before she talks. And he is okay with that. Like he thinks it's cute. He thinks her quirkiness and her, the things that make her different 
from the average Joe, he thinks that that is awesome and he loves it. And so we see a lot of that play out for her in this book where, you know, at one point she's like, I'm crazy. I'm weird. I seriously have been sitting here thinking about sucking on your t-shirt because there's something about it that just looks amazing. And he's like, so do you want me to take it off while you do that? Or just want and she's like, you're just going to let me do it. And he's like, yeah, if that's what you want to do. Sure, like that's you. Um, he has a nephew who is also neurodivergent, so he gets it, but his nephew is not understood by the parents. Um, so we we touched on all of that. I thought it was those parts were adorable. I like the book a lot. So it was definitely more toys for tots MC than Hell's Angels. Let's put it that way. So yeah. But I liked it. It was the third in this book in the series, but they can be read as standalones. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, my next book it was The Unruly by Kay Webster. This is the second book that has to be read after The Untamed. So I can't tell you what The Unruly was about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do you a favor and tell you, you should go read Wild and then read Free, then read Untamed, then read Unruly. If you like, if you're familiar with Kay Webster and you like Kay Webster, go read it. If you like Taboo, go read it. If you're like, hmm, maybe I would like to try some Taboo, go read it. I will say, though, The Unruly, as Jessica said with her book that has, like, the triggers as long as her arm, The Unruly does, too. There is a lot that happens in it and a lot of dark things happen in it. So please check triggers. You're going to want to check triggers before you start with The Wild. But the triggers for Unruly are going to be much more intense. So always check those triggers if you think that you might have some. But definitely go check those books out. They're, it was really good. I'm so excited to finally get to read Unruly. I, like, I was bummed when I read Untamed and then realized that it was like a cliffhanger mm -hmm. to read Unruly. So yeah, go yep. read it. Yep. Okay. I still need to read it. Yeah, I, like, I still need to read it. Um, yeah. Okay. It's on the list. So my last book before we talk together, it was the Mandy read this read this one last week. So this is um very mountain mound Halloween by Shaw Hart. Um, this one was interesting. It's a novella. There really wasn't much Halloween to it. So I, I you know, just saying that it's Halloween doesn't I, anyhow, that's a whole a whole different thing. This is about Magnolia and Graham. Magnolia's on the run. <coughs> She has a stalker. She's got a guy that's been chasing her. And uh, so she's been on the run for a while. And she stops at this little mountain town. And she goes into this convenience store. To, you know, she's got to get gas or she's got to get food or something. And she sees this guy in plaid. And he's all buffed up and hot. And she's like, yeah, that one's hot looking. Then she goes out to her car. And all of her tires have been slashed. And there's something in the shadows. Well, all of a sudden, she's grabbed from behind. Well, she's grabbed from behind by our hero, Graham, who sees somebody in the shadows and wants to save her. He takes her to his cabin. And there you go. That's it. I gave it three stars. I know it's a novella. It's really hard for me to rate novellas higher than that. Um, it's just, you know, they were like in love within 24 hours. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do you it. have to go into novellas knowing it's going to be ridiculous you know like that. You like novellas. I have a hard time with them because of that. Like, I need more. I need more for my novellas. Probably the only novella that I've ever read that was a standalone, not like one that goes with a with series, her. but yeah. an actual standalone novella. The only one I've ever read that I 100% really love as a written work would be The Evidence of the Fair. Yeah. That was so good. But and I still wanted more. I wanted that flushed out. I want to know what happened. Oh, I would have loved more, but I almost loved how it ended too. I still think about that one. It still, it doesn't end on an HEA. It, it doesn't end on a regular HEA. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Okay. okay. I like I do really enjoy novellas, but I have to be yeah. in the right mood for one. Yeah. And I have to go in. I rate them just based on what they are. If you're comparing them to other books, then no novella is probably going to stand up. That's why novellas that. are not good for me unless they're a part of a series. It's hard yeah. for me to get for novella. Did you read Daddy Read? Yes. Okay. See, I love that one, yeah. but it went with a series. Yes. Um yeah. 
I do, babe. That goes with Hades Hangman. Yes. Loved it. And there's several. There's like two you, or three that go with it. When you <laughs> read a novella that's just a standalone, you have to just realize you're going to get insta love and you're going to get some smut. Yeah. And you just have to be ready for that. But I enjoy them. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoy them. Because they're not for me. So, oh! you know. Did you have, you have one more I book to talk like about? I feel like there's a convincing my bestie coming up. God. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, I feel like you have one more book. Yes, I do. And then we'll talk about the one together, right? Yes. Can I oh, talk about perfect. my book now? Hey, stop. Yeah. Okay. So my next book is called The Wrong Game by Candy Steiner. It started off really strong and I was like, ooh, this is like a five star. And then I'm like, ah, it's probably going to be a four star. And then when we were done, it was a three and a half star, which technically maybe it was more of a three star. I don't know. I got bored again. I don't know what's wrong. Maybe it's me this week. So this is about Zach and Gemma. I really just like the idea of this book. So something, Gemma has an ex-husband. We read at the beginning of the story and kind of find out more about that. I don't want to give anything away though. So she has this ex-husband that she bought Chicago Bears tickets to season tickets for her and him to go. And so she decides by encouragement of her friend to kind of get back out there by inviting one guy to go with her out to each game, a different guy, different hookup, just to kind of get herself back in the game. Her friend actually puts in the ad thing for like, it's like a tender type app uh, that <laughs> she puts in DTF. And then she's like, what did her friends like, what does that mean? Because her friend's been married. So she's out of the lingo. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, tall, dark, and something else. <laughs> Can't remember. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know. I know. So I was loving this. And then Zach, who's the bartender at the bar that they've been going to, overhears this. And he's like, let me go with you on the first one. It'll be like a trial run. And you can kind of get your, you know, back in your groove. And so she agrees to it. And that's kind of where the story starts. And I was really enjoying it. And then just kind of went downhill a little bit after that. So it was still three and a half stars for me, maybe three, maybe four, depending on like my mood when I think about it, I guess. Okay. Okay. I normally like candy sooner. So I'm just not, I don't yeah. want to be so harsh on it, but I don't know. No. She was too hung up on some stuff that was happening and I was ready for her to let it go and move on. Okay. <laughs> that's what it was yeah. i needed her to move on get some counseling and move on <laughs> do it just just take care of it thank you that would be great okay so our last read was for buddy read which will be on bookmarked by jen's channel you can go rewatch the live show there and we will get on the channel on the live show we give away spoilers this little synopsis will not give away spoilers yeah, I will start off by saying this was my second Pam Godwin book. So this was and... Deliver, though. You didn't say the book. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, deliver. Okay. so Deliver. So I'll hold it. You talk. So I okay. Right, right, so right. this was my second Pam Godwin book. I read Dark Notes. And when I started Dark Notes, I really didn't like the abuse that our heroine was dealing with. Like, this is not a, a, a like a spoiler at all. It happens right from the get go. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. And I call Jessica and I'm like, I'm not reading this. This is like really awful. I don't, I just don't, I don't like this extreme level of abuse in a book. And you're like, just read it. <laughs> Keep reading. I Keep don't reading. say it in that voice, guys. I promise I don't. Oh, it's probably nastier. Keep reading. <laughs> Click. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do if you'd stop bothering me. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, I started to deliver, and Jessica was gone, shocking, always gone. And so I left her Marco Polo, and I was like, if this was not our buddy read, I would be done with this book. I do not like it, because it starts off with Liv kidnapping Joshua, who is the star quarterback. College. She kidnaps him because he is a virgin, and she is a sex trafficker, basically. And she trains them to be what the buyer wants. And so she kidnaps him and starts off torturing him to get him to bend to her will so she can train him. And I'm like, absolutely not. 
I don't want to read this, but I have to because of this stupid buddy read. <laughs> and then I kept reading and I really started to like it. And so just like with Dark Notes, Pam Godwin has this way of writing like this horrific beginning and then more things come to light as you're reading and it still keeps those dark undertones, but everything starts to make a lot more sense. Yeah. And I will say that Deliver, so Deliver is the first book in a nine book series and it starts <laughs> off. So nine? There's nine of them. Wait, three, mm. six. Yeah, there's nine, including Deliver. There's nine. Um, and you have to read them in order, but they're different couples in each book. And Don't I, go look at the order of the books though, because there's some spoilers. Because it will give that out. That will yeah. give the uh, things away. Um, I do have to say the second book is one of my favorites. Um, there's another favorite that's down the line in the books, but there, as far as, as for me with the nine books, Deliver is the weakest for me. I mean, I still loved it. I, I still love Deliver, but it is, I like the books that come after Deliver a lot more, but they all have that same feel to it. They're very, all very dark. This is one of the darkest things that Pam to date has written yet. And so this is a very dark series. Definitely check trigger warnings. Um, they're again, as long as my arm with these, with these books, but they're so good. I love them. I, I have really you read them. all nine then I did. I was okay. reading them as they were coming out. I was having to wait for them to come oh. out when I was reading these. So I've been reading them for the last several years. Okay. Yeah. And I remember looking at deliver like it would pop up my Kindle as like a suggestion and I'd be like, uh-uh, no, why are you reading that? Because the guy on the cover, the original cover looks really young. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, what is He's that? in college, just to he clarify. College, when I said but... he was the star quarterback. It's at his college. Yeah. The guy on the cover looks really young and like small. And I'm like, that don't work for me. But then when I actually picked up, started reading it, I was like, oh, oh, oh. And this is the first book that I ever read that had more of a femme dom type situation where the woman was the dominant and that he was this more of a submissive mm -hmm. so yeah but i love it i love their story yeah so definitely come or you know definitely go back and check and watch that video from our live show yes go do that yeah all right guys so that is all the books that we have for you this week all right, so make sure to leave us a comment. Let us know what some of your favorite reads were from this past week. And also, Jessica and I are working on some very exciting things coming up. We'll be talking about those more in, oh, probably not for another several weeks to a month, but we're working on some things behind the scenes. And one of our questions for you would be, what are some tropes that really intimidate you? Mm -hmm. Maybe there's like something um, we've talked about Omega verse lately, and maybe that's one that just intimidates you. You don't know where to start with reading that. So any tropes that intimidate you, or you just want more direction on where do I start with this trope? Leave us a comment about that as well. And make sure to check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.